Singapore's resale property market makes significant moves in April. Volume up nearly 25%, and prices drop 1.7% to break through the market's previous support level. We review the numbers and look at what the TOX says about the market ahead. Also, we take a field trip to District 10 to find out why it's outperforming the market. Next on XTV with your host, Mark Loon. Good day, I'm Mark Loon. Welcome to XTV's monthly resale property report. I'm standing outside the south gate to the gorgeous Botanic Gardens in District 10. It's a beautiful day and I've come here to find out why District 10 is outperforming the market. But first, the property news. Resale transactions in April posted a 24.6% increase over that of March. This is the second consecutive month volume has risen over the previous month. Also, April represents the highest number of transactions since October 2013. However, the market is still far from buoyant. On a year-on-year -year basis, April transactions were down 26.7% compared to the same month of last year. In addition, April's volume of 476 units sold is down 76.8% from its post-financial crisis peak of 2,050 units resold in April 2010. According to the SRX Index, Overall resale prices of non-landed private homes fell 1.7% in April. This sort of level was last seen 16 months ago in December 2012. Furthermore, it appears that the index has broken through the 173 support level established in November 2013. Rest of Central Region led the index decline by dropping 3.6%. Core Central came in at negative 2.3%. However, prices in outside Central inched up 0.4%. Putting the market into perspective, the SRX price index for private resale non-landed is down 4.1% from its previous peak in February 2013. For more analysis on the private resale numbers, we turn to Sam Baker. He is the Chief Executive Officer of the Singapore Real Estate Exchange, SRX. Thank you for joining me on location today in District 10, Sam. My pleasure, Mark. So help us break down the market, starting with private resale volume. Well, Mark, the market is actually responding according to plan. The cooling measures have effectively taken most of the investors, both foreign and local, out of the game. That means the demand in the market consists of normal buyers and those investors who are not restricted by the cooling measures. Yes, volume is up since March, but seasonality accounts for that rise. What's more important is the long-term trend. Volume is off its peak by almost 77% because of the cooling measures that have choked the demand. What about price then? Even though price appears to have broke through a support level, it's stubborn compared to volume. It's still down less than 5% from its peak more than a year ago. Prices drop more slowly than volume because the cooling measures have not altered the fundamentals of valuation. But what the measures have done by choking demand is given buyers negotiating power to keep chiseling away at prices. Transaction over X value, or TOX, is negative again in April. This is the seventh consecutive month in which we see a negative TOX. What does that pretend for the market going forward? Actually, the TOX, as an indicator of the market sentiment, has been bearish for much longer than seven months. Each month, SRX computers compare the actual transacted value for each unit and compare it to its X value. The difference between the two figures is the TOX. In April, the medium TOX was negative $20,000. That means 50% of home buyers paid over negative $20,000 and 50% paid under negative $20,000. As you can see from the graph, TOX dropped 33% or $5,000 from March to April. The market has been bearish as far back as the first quarter of 2013. As you can see, the TOX has been moving in the negative direction since the first quarter. The TOX came down significantly during first half of 2013. 
During July, August, and September, the TOX waffled around zero. Since then, more negative TOX, which has pulled the index below the 173 support level. So what does the TOX tell us about the next few months? My analysis is that we will see more of the same until something significant happens to readjust the market's behavior. Sellers will continue to resist a further decline in price, but will be forced to temper their expectations as eligible buyers negotiate hard. The result is a chiseling away of the overall price index. Let's take a look at the different districts stacked up in the league table for TOX. The top two districts in April with significant transactions and positive TOX are District 19 at positive $16,000 and District 10 at positive $37,500. The top two districts in April with significant transactions and negative TOX are District 12 at negative $40,000 and District 9 at negative $130,000. This table will be up in the research section of srx.com.sg for those of you who want to study it more in detail. Sam, there's an absolute difference between District 9 and 10 of $165,000, yet the districts are just next to each other. What gives? That's a good observation, Mark. It's quite a difference. My analysis is the reason for the disparity is that Singaporeans are more likely to live in District 10 and invest in District 9. Therefore, the cooling measures have had much more impact on District 9 because it has reduced demand from both overseas and local investors. Interesting. Now, let's check in with Angela Toh and find out what professional real estate agents think about District 10. But first, this background. District 10 is located in the core central region. It covers Bukatima, Holland Road, and Tangland planning areas. District 9 is on its eastern border. As you can tell from the SRX heat map, District 10 prices are above the median, but not as high as prices in District 1 and 9. In terms of sales over the last 90 days, it has experienced moderate volume and lags its next door neighbor, District 21. There are eight schools and three MRT stations. There are three more MRT stations planned for 2015 and an additional three for 2021. As we select view schools, you can see their locations. Let's say you want to live near Henry Park Primary School. By simply clicking on the school, you can see nearby projects. In this case, Glen Tree is the closest project. Let's say you are interested in renting at Ford at Holland. Rentals here go for $3,200 to $11,000. There are two listings verified by SRX and 35 public online classifieds not verified by SRX. The two agents shown on your screen are both qualified investors with SRX. They can provide you with unit level rental information for negotiating. This information is only available to members of SRX. If you get hungry while looking for homes, no problem. Select location and you can head over to Cha Cha Cha's for some Mexican food. Now that we have an understanding of how quickly we familiarize ourselves with District 10, let's check in with Angela Toe. Hi Mark, I'm now standing in front of Juan Jovois with Ken Go from ERA. So why are people paying above X value in District 10 while they are paying below X value in most of the other districts, including nearby District 9? District 10 has been a favorite place for both local and foreigner to invest their money in or to stay in this area. As an expatriate, they are willing to pay premium rent to stay near to the international school, to stay near to the MRT, for the fine dining uh, available in these nearby places and also for uh, the supermarket in this area. So Ken, where do you see the market is heading now? The market has been heading south since the introduction of TDSR, which is the Total Debt Servicing Ratio in 29 June 2013. I believe that the market it will stay weak unless more sellers are willing to sell below market prices. 
as you can see, the developer has recently dropped their prices so as to attract more buyers to come into buying into their properties. So I hope that uh, more seller will be willing to follow these steps. Hi Mark, I'm now with Willie Ching from Hutton's and he recently transacted Casa Jovois and right now we are standing in front of the project. So why is District 10 an attractive district for both uh, home buyers and renters? Uh, there are actually many, many reasons. Firstly, I think if you understand about how districts were formed and stuff, I basically, I think District 10 is one of the first districts that started out as the most premium because, you know, that's where the city centre started. And uh, to be honest, not just in the hearts of locals, but also foreigners as well. When you talk about Singapore property market, what first comes to the mind when you talk about, you know, high-end premium quality um, uh, properties, District 10 ultimately is the only one that will come to their mind. Of course, before they were 9 and 11 actually searched uh, in terms of popularity. So I think having this a very long-term you know kind of perception that a lot of buyers and of course tenants as well which I will elaborate on later that of course is really one of the key important points why people always believe that District 10 is a very attractive district compared to other districts in Singapore now with regards to rentals obviously with District 10 as I mentioned earlier location is amazing so Willie, yes. so why is uh, District 10 outperforming other districts? A lot of people have this perception that city centre prices tends to be the highest. Actually, if you understand you know, District 10 properly, there are actually a lot of places which are still quite affordable. And I've also served buyers as well, looking around. And of course, for them, it's like, oh, I think District 10 is going to be above 2,000 per square feet. That's not true. You know, as I mentioned, it covers a big stretch of area. And there are a lot of, you must understand, for property-wise, if I could elaborate on this point, is that District 10 is probably the only district in Singapore that actually covers has the widest range in terms of three factors. One is location, which I mentioned earlier. Number two is the age, because you understand it's one of the first few districts that was developed. So you have properties as always like what, 30 years old, and of course you have like newly built ones as well. Of course, between a 30 year old property and a new one, the range of price is, is very wide. So while people think it's always above 2,000 square feet, but you could get something like 1,000, 3,000, 4 for free old property. You know, so when people just start to think that hey, thousand three thousand for freehold in District Ten, why not? You know, that's why demand always goes in, and people will still find that attractive. Now, the last thing is about uh, I talk about age. The last thing is about size. All right, size. If you understand all the uh, study all the different districts as well, District Ten has one of the largest range in terms of size. You know, a three bedroom can range from like a six hundred plus square feet for some of the new studio apartments. You know, to some of the largest uh, like a two thousand square feet penthouse. I just visited one at uh, Amor Park area. You know, that's like two thousand only three bedrooms so can you imagine the, the width in terms of that so with this kind of different kinds of what you call this a property choices available for buyers of course you know yeah even if you're shopping having a variety is always good rather than if you go to other districts where okay a three bed is always around this price uh, around this price and size district 10 offers a wide range right so depending on the buyer's budget uh, either it is is it depend, depending on the PSF or your total quantum, which of course a lot of buyers are concerned now because of all the loan restrictions. I think there's always a wider range of activities, uh, uh, what do you call this, options available compared to other districts. Okay, Willie, thank you so much for your thank time. You so much, Angela. Really appreciate it. Okay, yeah. Mark, back to you now. Thank you, Angela, for that report. It has been fun to visit District 10 with you. Now, before I close today's show, let me briefly update you on the private rental market. Rental volume remained flat from March to April. SRX estimates that 3,202 units will be rented once the paperwork clears. On a year-on-year -year basis, rental volume improved over April 2013 by 9.8%. According to the SRX Index for non landed Private Residential Rentals, Overall rental prices in April was up by 0.2% after reaching a 27-month low in March. Compared to the peak rental price observed in January 2013, rents in April are still down by 5.4%. Breaking down the respective regions, rest of Central posted a 0.5% price increase. Core Central and Outside Central softened by 0.6% and 0.2% respectively. We will explore the rental market in much more detail next week, so please join us then. And that concludes today's show. I hope you have enjoyed our visit to District 10. From all of us at XTV, thank you for watching and have a good day.